Hello, I want to welcome all of you to our Sunday, the 29th of March service, coming to you by recording, obviously, uh, because we can't meet together. But I trust that you're keeping well and that this little time together, when we reflect again on the psalm that we had started last week, will be of benefit to all of us. I just want to open with a prayer from the uh, to open our worship let us pray in mystery and grandeur we see the face of god in all the earthiness and the ordinary we know the love of christ in the heights and the depths and in life and in death the spirit of god is moving amongst us amen These are difficult times, aren't they? We have not been able to gather together in worship or in groups, and um, we certainly have missed one another a great deal not being able to do that. But thankfully, through this medium, we at least can keep connected. And um, I want to share with you some of the thoughts and prayers of the church as it is universal. So let's join together in a prayer of confession. How great is your faithfulness, O God of all eternity. We race through life, so sometimes full of our own plans, so consumed by our anxieties, and yet you are still there for us when we dare to pause before you. Forgive us, God, for our forgetfulness and bring us to a fresh clarity of your presence with us. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. The psalm that we've been thinking about, and this is really part two, which will be uh, printed on the website. You can read it there. Just remind us what it says in this psalm. O Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle on the f at the furthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, sorry, skipped a page, and the light around me becomes a night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. And then he goes on, verse 13, For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I may know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. He ends the psalm with these words. Search me, O God. The same way he began, incidentally. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. 
He had begun the psalm by saying, O oh Lord, you have searched me and know me. And he ends by asking God to truly search him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On this uh, Sunday, uh, this fifth Sunday of Lent as it is, we are celebrating uh, the Lenten season, a time when we are asked to call together, to walk together with God. And uh, we, we reflect on the darkness that was soon to surround the disciples and our Lord in these closing days before his arrest. We too are sitting in the midst of a troubled world. We have been asked to stay separate and this has been difficult. Gail and I went out for a walk the other day when the sun was shining and um, we were able to walk on the golf course. It was a beautiful day. Everyone was out, uh, all keeping their distance. And it was a reminder that we are still part of a society that is alive and moving, even though we're much confined to our homes. And I know that uh, some of you have felt that deeply, being confined. So let's reflect a little bit on this psalm that we have been reading. Psalm 139, I've called this Nowhere to Hide, part two. He reminds us in this psalm that there is nowhere to hide from God. And as we live under this threat of COVID-19, there are many comforting words in this psalm for us today. Even today, where, whether we're keeping our families safe at home, whether we're looking after others, or whether we're sitting alone with our thoughts, God says, I'm with you. The psalmist says, Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. So even now, in the midst of this situation, God is so keenly aware of each one of us, our anxieties and our fears, as well as our joy. So this is a great challenge to our faith, isn't it? Remember what the psalmist said? Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, this sense that God is everywhere and cannot be avoided. It's too wonderful for me. It's so high I cannot attain it. And again he says, how weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end and I am still with you. In short, this psalmist has a hard time getting his head around this idea of an ever-present God. And sometimes I think we probably have the same problem. The truth that God knows my thoughts, knows my body intimately, knows my beginning and my end, and knows my innermost fears and doubts, that's pretty challenging and pretty amazing. But the reality is it's not just God that we sometimes hide from. Sometimes we hide from one another. Sometimes our public masks hide us completely from our neighbor. Yes, even from those in our closest relationships. Many of you may have seen a long time ago now a, a movie called A Beautiful Mind. It was actually 2001, a long time ago. It's the story of John Nash, a true story of a brilliant mathematician at Princeton University in the United States, whose inner world became a nightmare, a nightmarish journey into delusion and hallucination. He believed that he was finding messages sent to him through television or newspapers, a very skewed view of reality leading him to deep paranoia. 
And all of this is unknown to his wife. He had believed he was working for the government, decoding secret messages, and had kept all of this from her. She knew nothing about it. And then a breakdown occurs, and he is taken to a psychiatric hospital where his wife begins to learn the truth about what's been going on with her husband. There's a particularly poignant moment in the film when she goes to his office and with his two colleagues. And there she finds on the office walls, covered with newspapers and magazine clippings, she asks if this is all he's been doing. And they tell her about the secret packages he's been delivering to a deserted home and dropping into the mailbox. She goes there and discovers all the packages unopened. The truth about her husband's delusions is hard for her to believe and bear. But now she knows she has proof. So we cannot hide from one another, or sorry, we can hide from one another, but we cannot, according to this psalm, hide from God. And God's intimate knowledge of me and of you and his delight in his physical creation ought to challenge some of Western Christianity's negativity towards our physicality. We often mistakenly think that a Christian is one who is supposed to denigrate the body, avoid passion, but aspire to be spiritual at the exercise at the expense of being embodied creations. Hollywood portrays Christian like this all the time. In all of its movies and television, this kind of Christianity, this insipid, weak kind of Christianity is portrayed. But faith doesn't reduce us to a pale imitation of humanity. It enlivens and gives purpose and direction to our lives. Celtic spirituality that I've been talking about recently knows this truth very well. In a little book called The Sounds of the Eternal, a Celtic Psalter, I read this prayer that is offered for a Tuesday morning in the Psalter. Thanks be to you, O God, for the stirrings of new life in me this day, for rising from the dreams of the night to a fresh flowing of energy for the vitality that awakened my body and the desires that stir my soul. Let me know the power of life within me, the life force that is in my senses and the might that is in my heart. This prayer reminds me at least that to be truly human and in a relationship with God through Jesus does not reduce my passion or play down my body or squelch my desires. Moreover, a relationship like the one that's described in this psalm can never be bland. It cannot passively sit on the cutting issues of our day and remain neutral. To know this God and to be known by him affects my life at the very deepest level. Knowing God's care for his truest, deepest self moves this psalmist to praise and prayer. May it be that it does that for us. A reminder again how he closes. Search me, O God. Know my heart. Test me. Know my thoughts. And see if there's any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. May it be true for us during this Lenten season that we are open to God's knowledge of each one of us and knowing that never shrinks from loving us completely and unreservedly. What an amazing, what an amazing psalm, what an amazing God, what amazing truth. God be with you.
bless you and watch over you now and always. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen.